Hello everyone, this is Ankit Jain. I welcome you all to my another session on the quick tech. I would like to start this quick tech with one scenario. Let's assume that we do have one project team which do have the multiple project members working for one client. Client have given the three different project statement to three different developers to work on. Only thing common that in the problem statement is the background where client is asking that they are looking for the red background. So here developer one have decided to go for this red background, developer two have decided to go for this red background and developer three have decided to go for another red background here. Client have not specified the exact hexadecimal code that the developers have to use and because of which developers have used altogether different background. Now they have done their changes and moved their changes to the QA environment. During the QA, QA figured out that the components that has been developed by the different developers, they are using the different background. So they have reported this as a bug. Once the developer started doing the changes for the bug fix, they have to go and make the changes in all the different components that they have created. For example, developer one have created 10 different components. Developer two have also created 10 different components and the developer three also have done the same. So in all together, they have to go and modify 30 different components here. Let's assume that they have done the changes in all these 30 different components and they have moved their changes to the UAT environment now. Now in the UAT environment, client is asking that they don't have to go and use this kind of a red environment or a red background. They need another red background. For example, let's say they have to go and use this red background. Now again, the developers have to do the same stuff. They have to go and modify all these 30 different components one more time. How you can or how the developers can do this effectively rather than every time whenever they are receiving the change, they go and modify all these different components. The answer to this is the design token. What is design token now? Again, design token is the concept that comes up with the SLDS, which will allow you to give the names to the design attribute. Design tokens are nothing but the name entities that store the visual design attribute. Salesforce do provide the uh, design attributes as well. So here we do have the design attributes available under the two different legend. One is the global access and second is the internal. Global access are something which the developers on the Salesforce platform can use but internals are something which only the Salesforce developers can use for their own internal project. It is not available to use on the Salesforce platform. So let's take the similar example now. Our developers have to use the common red color but when they started looking for the background color for the red color they figured out that Salesforce does not have any global access token available for the red color. So how they can go and use the concept of design token and apply the background. The answer to this is our today's topic that is the token bundle. So what the developers will do developers will go and create a token bundle in that token bundle they go and create the multiple tokens. So token bundle will allow them to create their own design token. To create their own design token, they have to go to the developer console, click on file, click on new and after that they have to go and select the lightning token. One key note here is whenever they are creating the first token, they have to make sure that they are giving the name as the default token. In case the team wants to create additional tokens then they can go and definitely create the additional tokens but they have to make sure that they are importing all those tokens in this default token. This default token will be available in your component without even importing that token bundle. Okay, so the first step that I mentioned here is you have to go to the file, click on new and click on the design lightning token. You have to make sure that the name must be the default tokens here. So as soon as you go and put this one token file will be created in which the starting tag will be aura tokens and the ending tag will be the slash aura tokens. Now in this aura token file or in this token bundle, we can go and define as many tokens as we want. So here you can see in this aura tokens file, we here we go and design as many tokens. So here the two things which are mandatory here is first you have to give the name to your token. Again, you can give any name to your token, but you have to make sure that the token name must be in the camel case. And in the value, you can go and specify whatever the CSS attribute value that you want to pass. For example, for the attribute of background color, this is the value that we have to pass. In our requirement, let's say client is asking for this hexadecimal value that we have to pass. So from here, you can go and create the 
value and here you can go and create your own aura token so in one token bundle you can go and define as many aura tokens you want now to use this aura token in your lightning web component you have to use the ESS var function so this is the attribute in which you have to pass the value so let's say here uh, we have to pass the value to the color so here i am putting the var putting cc this is this should be the namespace and followed by the token name so whatever the token name that you have given here you have to make sure that exact same token name that you are passing to your attribute right let's go and see this in example for in this example demo what we will do here is we will go and create one lightning card and in that lightning card we will go and give the background with this red color how to do that let's get started so first thing that we have to do here as the steps mentioned we have to go and create the token bundle so again i am following the documentation navigate into the file clicking on new selecting the option of lightning token and here i have to make sure that the token name must be the default token here so i'm navigating to the developer console file new lightning tokens and here i go and put the token name as the default token and clicking on submit now in this token bundle i can go and add as many tokens i want for example here i am adding the aura token giving the name here as let's say uh my background color only thing you have to make sure is the name must be in the camel's case so here i am putting the name in the camel case and followed by that i want to whatever the value that i want to pass i can go and pass that value here so here i want to pass this value so let me go and get this hexadecimal value from here and put it in the developer console you can get these values from w3 schools or in the css also in the google also you can go and type the css color picker so this is the value let's in as i mentioned in this token file you can go and add as many tokens as you want let's say another token that i want to add here is the uh, font size so let me go and define here the another token let's say uh, my font size and let's say here i am putting the font size as uh, 12 pixel whatever the token that you want to apply you just go and define all those tokens here once your token file is ready now the next thing that you have to do here is we have to use these tokens in our lightning web component in our scenario we are we're going to use these tokens for the lightning card so let's go and create one lightning card component so in my VS code, I'm creating my lightning web component, taking the option of control shift P, taking the option of create lightning web component and giving the name to the component here as custom design token demo. Let me go and click on enter. Now here I have to go and create one lightning card. So I'm navigating to the HTML file and creating one lightning card here. Lightning card, putting a title here as custom design token demo putting an icon name as custom custom 14 okay and here i also go and put one text let me go and put the text here as welcome to channel tech journey with ankit here i want the background for my lightning color must be in the red color so here i go and apply the css to apply the css i am assigning the one class to my lightning card let's say here i am putting the class name as background color now we have to go and design this class in our css file so here i go and create one css file so the css the name of the css file must be the same as our bundle name so here i go and put the demo dot css my CSS file is created. In my CSS file, I will go and define this class. Now, how we can override the CSS of the standard component? Here, lightning card is the standard component. How we can go and override the CSS of the standard component? I have already covered this in our one of the previous quick take video. I will recommend that you guys definitely go over it. Let me put a quick revision here. So here to do that, you have to navigate to the SLDS and for here you have to go and look for that component as we have to apply the CSS, override the CSS of the standard component of a lightning card. Here I will go and search for the lightning card. If you scroll down, you will get the option of styling hook. So go here 
look for the styling hook i will also put the link uh, of that quick take video in the video description so you will understand what is styling hook how you can use the styling hook in more detail here in my scenario i have to use this styling hook to override the color so this is the styling hook name to override the color so i am copying this styling hook from here again navigating back to my css file right now here we have to go and apply the css how we can apply the css again we discussed from the documentation to apply the css we have to use the var function followed by the namespace followed by the token name so let again let me go and copy this from here and put it here there should be a colon so here var followed by the namespace followed by the name of the token the name of the token that we have given in our scenario is the my background color so i am taking this token name and putting it here as i said you can give any token name it's completely up to you we have created one component we have changed the background color by overriding the styling hook of that component and this is the custom token that we have created now let's go and expose this component to the app builder to check the final output so here i am exposing at true defining the targets here and here i go and put the target as an app page let me go and deploy this component So my component is deployed here successfully. Now next we will go and add this component to our app page. So this is my app page that I have created for this demo purpose. Let me go and refresh to check whether the component is available or not. And here I go and drag and drop the component. Let me go and click on save. Now let's go and drag and drop this component on our app builder. So here I go and drag and drop this component. You can see here the background of our component has been changed. Let me go and save this. We will see these changes on the app page directly. You can see that the background of our lightning card is changed by using the design token. Again, a quick revision why we have selected the design token. We have selected the design token because we want to give the own attribute name to our CSS file. We have created our own custom design token here because Salesforce does not provide the background that our business is asking for or that my business is demanding for. So for that reason, I have created my own custom token here by using the concept of token bundle. I hope folks you got some learning in this video. If yes, make sure you are clicking the like button and also subscribing to my channel as well. Thank you. Happy learning.